Hey everybody, welcome back. It's business and it's time to do an overview on the Benson, the tier 8 US destroyer. And this was actually my favorite destroyer back in the closed beta test, you know, a year ago. So it's time to see if things have changed at all. I mean, granted, I've got a shitload more experience than I used to, so especially in destroyers. Um, also, you know, tastes have changed, the game has changed. But uh, let's see where the Benson stands compared to the prior ships that are reviewed and uh, where I think it fits in the game overall. So coming from the man, what can you expect? Uh, basically you have better concealment and incredibly fast turret traverse. These have a 180 degree turret traverse time of 5 seconds. That is a huge improvement. I mean granted the, the Mayhem isn't terribly slow but shit anything feels slow after you play the Benson. I mean, they're just, they're lightning quick, and so that really, really drives home the hunter-killer aspect of the ship as far as hunting other destroyers down, and, you know, when you're looking at the torpedoes, you lose a rack compared to the Mayhem, which is rather unfortunate. Um, you do start off with the same exact torpedoes as the upgraded Mayhems, but you do get the chance to get the upgraded torps here that they don't improve the range or speed, it's still 9.2 kilometers and still 55 knots but you get a bump in the damage output at the max of 16,000. So that's a, well, 16.6K, um, which is a real big help, actually. It doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking about, you know, your torpedo going into the side of a battleship and doing half damage, I'd rather have half damage from a 16,000 damage torp as opposed to 11,000 damage or 10,000. But yeah, either way, um, the speed boost, pretty damn helpful with this. And, <laughs> you know, you do have a, uh, nice top speed there, so um, I like to work that, especially with the speed flag, but I need some more double strikes to be able to drive that home. Um, you do have the option of doing the sea hull, which of course it does improve your rudder shift, so that's a plus. It cut, cuts that down to 2.1 seconds, which is insane, but it also increases your AA and uh, gives you the option of defensive fire. I don't suggest that. I, I think you should really utilize the gunboat role for this and uh, take that from there. And of course, the usual lineup of mods, concealment, and you know, rudder shift, so on and so forth. Um, the concealment stock, uh, well, actually, I forget what it is stock, but I think it's like um, 7.2 kilometers that goes down to 6.6. .6, so that's a huge plus. And uh, with camo, it gets down to 6.4. Uh, just taking a look at the captain skills here. I'm going to actually respect this. Uh, so what you see when you see it uh, in this video, I'm actually going to have a different setup. I'm going to get rid of Demolition Expert here and go with survive, uh, Survivability Expert. Again, that 3200 HP that you get at Tier 8 with that is really important when you're running a gunboat style uh, approach like you know and and you guys know my play style i'm aggressive as shit with this thing i want to hunt other destroyers down so uh that suits me very well and uh i've been enjoying that in the fletcher and it also helps when <clears throat> i stumble into an enemy torpedo yeah we'll say stumble into so that sounds like it's more of an accident than just me being stupid but um yeah i got the usual flags here of course uh always try to get those consumables reloaded as fast as possible so uh, that's why i run the premium that's why i run that flag um you never know when you're going to need that speed boost or you know the aa if you run that and we'll get to that again uh in regards to the fletcher but uh yeah as far as the camos are concerned they look pretty cool i am running the skin by tans which of course if you check the description i'll leave the link there but i do run this uh the my my usual one the the one for credits with the uh, concealment and the enemy accuracy debuff so that brings it down to 6.4 kilometers I cannot wait to get concealment expert on this now let's jump into some gameplay here and this is a uh, this was actually patch 5.4 and you'll notice that because within a couple seconds here yeah well that happens I lose the turret and as you can see by the arrangement of their team there, they have, let's see, a Fubuki, a Mayhan, Hatsu, Farragut, and Farragut. I've got to have all of my damn turrets for this, but I launched Torps and check this out. There's a little Mayhan backing up, and I'm not even sure if he reacts to this, but that's going right into the sweet spot. And good night. <laughs> I just sent those out to try to ward off anybody from coming in so I could have some breathing room and uh, 
you know, it just it just works out like that sometimes. So, um, you yeah, know, I've been on the receiving end of that a few times too. So that sucks, but you yeah, know, that's destroyer life for you, right? Speaking of which, yeah, lost another turret, and it, it really blows me away that it took this long to solve this problem. Like, or, or at least address it in some fashion, because there goes another one, and I have my B turret disabled. This shit is ridiculous. And I gotta say, like, destroyer play, um, you know, and I, I've talked about this before, like, the Ognavoy is actually a, a really solid destroyer now because you just have such a, a lower chance of actually having those uh those turrets knocked out and when you only have a few turrets and you know two um two turrets with two guns in them each i mean that losing 50 percent of your your offensive capability is ridiculous but i'm um, again hats off to wargaming for finally doing something about it it's it was just a long time coming so uh yay but at this point, I am trying to push into A a little bit and send in some torps to try to corral them and uh, keep them turning and slowing down as my uh, teammates come back into their cap. Because you can see that we have them pretty well corralled here on their cap. And that's a, a pretty big deal when you're talking about being down 150 points. So things have not really gone all that well for me this match. Uh, you know, like I said, down three out of five turrets. That's not a good situation for anybody, of course. Um, the benefit, at the very least, that I mean, not the benefit, the, uh, the good thing is that with a reload rate this fast, and with, of course, the benefit of having basic firing training to it, uh, make that even faster, um, I mean, this has a three-second reload with basic firing training you're still capable of putting out some damage against an enemy destroyer so that's you know i even though i'm in a position where i'm offensively gimped i'm not completely impotent and that's a a huge thing when it comes to this ship because those those turrets are just so damn good these guns are just so damn good you know always being able to keep track of the target and you know just keep pumping out shell after shell into the side of an enemy Hatsuharu here uh, you know that sort of thing and guess what I'm down to one turret <laughs> you want to talk about RNG just shitting all over me and here's the thing I just keep firing away so you, know, you just gotta do what you gotta do, and at this point I'm expecting the enemy destroyer, one of them, right after I take that guy out with the torp, to be in front of me, but unfortunately he's off to my side, and he seems to have all of his turrets, the lucky SOB, so all I've got left is a torp spread, and I decide to go with a wide one, uh, make it harder for him to dodge that, and sure enough, boom, get him. But, I can tell you that was not a pleasant game. I mean, I'm glad it went that way in the end because of the fact that I was able to, you know, take out and corral and keep their destroyers in the same general area. And, you know, if they're focusing on me, they're not focusing on my team. And that's actually a really good point here is that I was pretty much shitting bricks because there's a Benson and a Fletcher right in front of me and a, a lone... Benson is not going to hold up against that. I mean, you really don't want to face another enemy Benson or, you know, even a Mayhem. Um, any enemy gunboats are very, very dangerous for destroyers to face off against. So you always want to try to make sure that the odds are horribly stacked in your favor in any engagement. I mean, this holds true for any given ship-to-ship -ship combat, of course. In You don't want a one-on-one, -on -one, you want a five-on-one. You know, you want to get rid of that enemy as fast as possible and uh, be completely dominating in your in your fight. So the the more leeway you give them to be involved and to do damage to you, the worse off it's going to be for you. So, yeah, just a, a case of self-interest, really. Now, I had dodged wave after wave of torps from the enemy Benson and Fletcher and... Then I noticed this Iowa steaming over here. Now, I, I haven't addressed this at all because I didn't really feel like it really warranted it. I mean, it did, but I, I don't like making videos on certain things that... I don't know. I, I'm, I'm rather picky about the topics. So, that's a bot. And that's a dead bot. 
and I don't care that it's a bot, it felt good to kill him. <laughs> so now this is not a bot, but this is another one of those things where so far in the first three clips, you'll see that a Benson, especially um, any destroyer really, in the right position, can hold up a lot of tonnage of ships. And, I mean, just look at this. I mean, there's ships all over the place, and they can't get past me simply because of the fact that I'm here, and the fact that this guy just walked right into a torp spread and got devastatingly struck. <laughs> So that's a warning sign to his teammates that they can't push forward. I mean, that's this is the thing about destroyers that makes them powerful, is presence, area denial. The fact that those guys could not really get involved in the match simply because of the fact that I was there. And not, and I'm not saying me, I'm saying the, dis, the destroyer, the Benson, the whether it's a, a Mayhan or a Fabuki, you just you can't push forward. So... That's where you need destroyers to help you out, carriers to help you out, and that's the whole balance of the game, as it should work. But um, also, of course, now with radar being uh, prevalent, especially you know a tier eight up, um, you know that's a huge factor and gives people a lot more confidence in being able to move in and be able to uh, handle the destroyer threat. Now, I launched some torps over there towards sea because it didn't look like that destroyer was moving, and just in case, and like. You know, one of the ships moved back. I just ripped that AO with the shreds with AP and watching these torps go in, which those torps would have killed them anyways. I guess I didn't really have to do that, but you know, get a little bit more dramatic effect. And sure enough, torpedo hit the destroyer that was sitting there. So kind of random. Now this match I remember quite well. It was less than a month ago, but um, you know, before patch 5.5 hit. So, uh, there's a Nuremberg and a Matsuki over here, and if you're watching on the minimap, that Nuremberg flips a bitch like crazy fast. Like, he he did a 180 like unbelievably quick, so you're gonna see him here in a second again. And as you saw there, the, uh, the X targeting feature, um, the game was trying to figure out whether or not I'd be able to shoot over the island there. Um, of course, in the game, I don't see that in the replay I do. Apparently, in an upcoming patch, I don't know if it's 5.6 or the one after, uh, they will be implementing a thing about... And again, this is just only what I've heard, so I can't really confirm it. Um, that it'll tell you whether or not you'll be able to clear the island in the game now. So that'll be fantastic. Um, hopefully, I can finally stop getting accused of packs because people don't know what the hell is actually going on. But you see the AP shh reading this Nuremberg hitting right underneath that smokestack right in the sweet spot and I did launch the torps there just in case I had to get out of there and I couldn't sit in the smoke and you know use my AP the Mizuki comes back for more and uh, he's turning out to his right as well I am certainly the target for all those ships over there that are coming this way so after taking a nice close look at that rock I decided to get the hell out of there and sure enough hey there's the Mizuki again now Sometimes I'm an idiot. This is one of those times. Luckily, I didn't have to pay for it too much. <laughs> that was close as hell. And so I'm even more determined to clear this Matsuki out because I can't have that happen again. That was so, so, so close. Now I see the North Carolina and Fuso coming. I decided to drop a wall of torps or you know, my, my wall of torps. And the North Carolina came to a slow pretty quickly, but the Fuso didn't seem to get the memo. Now, just before these torps run out, I get one, two, and three hits. So these guys know I'm here. And as you saw, the North Carolina was just burning there. So he uh, had used up his repair kit, and so did the uh, Fuso because he had been flooding. So this is an ideal situation to post up, hit the smoke, and just start laying into these guys. And they actually both fluctuate in and out of uh, detection, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, I started uh, switching back and forth between these two targets and trying to get them on fire, and there we go. Um, just a, one of those great area denial moments that makes playing a destroyer, especially a gunboat, um, you know, where they're able to fight back with their guns as well um, and pepper a target and try to get a, a lot of fires. I mean, these guys have to turn away because of the fact that I can hit them and I can go ahead and 
make them burn through their heals and stuff like that and make them less effective against my teammates. So that's uh, it's a great way to mitigate damage against your team as a whole, like if you're thinking about the, the team health pool as opposed to just a single ship. Now admittedly that first torp spread was uh, ill-advised. I thought the New Mexico was going to turn, but he did. He just stayed bow forward. I obviously did a better job with the second one. It was still a surprisingly sharp angle, but um, you know, four of them found, found their mark and uh, finished him off. Now I should have paid a little bit more attention because those torps that were just in front of me right after that were from an Otago. And I don't know about you guys, and by the way, did you see how little damage I took from those shells? I bounced a lot of those shells from the Otago at this range. I mean, they were AP, so yay, but um, I've racked up six citadels, and you're going to see me beach because I'm an idiot, but check this out. This is when you switch to HE. Notice that? The slight angle there is enough to prevent me from being able to penetrate his armor for citadel damage. So I switch back to HE, probably a uh, salvo too late. His salvo of AP there did a lot more damage to me than the first one because I was broadside. Now check this out. He's got HE loaded and whoo, talk about dodging the bullet. That was close as hell. And I switched back to AP because I can. You know, having to reload this short makes it much easier to fight against destroyers and try to maximize your damage in terms of managing your... Uh, their angle against your guns and whatnot, so that's a, that was a huge plus, but um, I actually survived that match, I think, with 251 HP, so yeah, another close call. Alright, and for the final match, this is my best one, and I uh, just want to say disregard the torpedo timer down at the bottom, I know it still says I have a minute and 10 seconds on my torps, I fast forwarded it, and because I had an issue with this crashing a couple times on me, and because of that, it doesn't it didn't actually keep the torpedo timer accurate until I launched them, which is curious, but uh, there's a lot of replay bugs. Decide to send out my torps, try to slow these guys from advancing into A. Um, granted, don't have the right angle to cut across, but sure enough, I get a first blood devastating strike because the New Orleans I hit detonated. Ouch. Um, and what I was saying about the angle is uh, if I was more on the two line as opposed to the three, I'd be able to cut into that little nook that uh, is just south of A to be able to try to uh, get the guys that hide there because that's where I go. Um, and that's uh, certainly a, a really good place to try to launch towards into. Now we get air, well, the other destroyer gets air dropped on and those torpedoes didn't really slow anybody down because they are charging right into A <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of ships back here. Now I'm fighting against the Fubuki here trying to uh, get rid of this guy because he's a huge threat. Um, you know, just being able to see a Japanese destroyer if they're in your sight, I mean, and, and this goes, this holds true for any destroyer, you just gotta get rid of them as fast as possible uh, regardless of the ship and uh, that you're in. Now I make a huge mistake here that torp spread because I didn't look behind me. I didn't have the spatial awareness to at least check my surroundings first and foremost. And there's a damn North Carolina a stone's throw away from me. So I could have done so much more here and unfortunately I started taking a lot of damage from the North Carolina. So um, yeah, it's time to get the hell out of Dodge, I think. And so I get over to B and consider my escape option there because, and that's exactly what I was looking at. One, the Otago, two, my escape route, and then back at the Otago. <laughs> um, I realize he's starting to turn north. I, I'm not in a position to be able to fight against him and uh, just don't have enough backup, even with Freire in his uh, New Orleans there. Um, I'd rather not try to engage against him just in case the Salvo comes after me. So switch over to uh, going after this Amagi here at sea, and you can still see those guys up in the minimap there hanging out and you know doing their thing, trying to I guess protect the carrier and the AFK. Which you know as long as it, those points don't end up in the enemy hands, I'm okay with it. Um, at least after the fact, uh, during the match, I was pretty pissed. <laughs> but the Amagi tries to run away, and that's just not going to happen against a ship like the Benson. Um, not when he's within range of these guns, so, you know, you can just keep harassing like hell. So, 
moving up ahead. I decided to fire a wave of torps at the Baltimore when I saw him pop up on the map. Um, unfortunately, those end up missing. I didn't lead ahead far enough. And then the Iowa and the North Carolina are moving in, trying to finish off uh, Swagger in his North Carolina. So I send off a wave of torps to them. And unfortunately, WASD hacks are too strong. North Carolina manages to dodge that. So yeah, rather unfortunate. All right, so this situation is getting a lot more serious second by the second. And under any circumstance, we're going to lose Swagger in his North Carolina. And that's the salvo right there that does it, I believe. Yep, he's gone. But we also lose a destroyer as well, the Mayhem. So that puts us in a bit of a bad spot. Now we're down 100 points, and I've got about a minute to, well, just over a minute to try to make something happen here against these uh, battleships. And... I gotta say props to our ranger, our carrier player. Um, you see those uh, fighter planes coming in here? Well, our carrier is sending in his dive bombers and his torpedo planes to try to get something happening here too. He's focusing on these guys because one, they're, they're, again, they're just way, way too close to uh, the rest of our team here. And I'm sitting here trying to make something happen as well. So I do a widespread, try to just get any type of damage I can and um, try to get these fires going, get these guys on their repairs, burning up their cooldowns and all that stuff. And it actually starts to work. And uh, yeah, I mean, these guys have been harassed by the dive bombers. We got the torque bombers coming in. You'll see a hit on the Iowa just right there, which, uh, you know, every little bit helps. I get a hit on the North Carolina, a few more on the Iowa, take him out. And now it's just a matter of time to get the uh, the North Carolina here. Now, my big worry was that he would get close enough to go ahead and make me concealed, and so I'm just <laughs> frantically trying to set him up on fire again, and there we go. So that was a pretty big deal. Now, you saw there just a second ago that C was getting capped. Now, this is kind of a problem. So the Otago, like I've said, is no joke when it comes to destroyer killing, and this is not a good situation for me to be in. Um, we only have a 40 point lead right now, but that's going to diminish, of course, because it's three caps to one, and it's going to diminish rather quickly. So they still have a few ships remaining, and send out my torps at the Otago here, trying to just do some damage, of course, try to get something happening, and unfortunately, he's going to pay attention to me a little bit more than I uh, wanted him to, but... <laughs> As is typical with pretty much any cruiser when you want them to like focus on somebody else. No, they're going to focus on you. He manages to dodge those towards, so nice job there. But um, I'm trying to get the hell out of here and you know manage some sort of damage as well on this guy. Because if I'm going to go down, I want him to at least catch fire a couple more times and um, you know put him in a position to have to make something happen so he can survive. Um, or just, you know, obviously make sure he dies so check this out trying to get this kill shot on him gets so close he hardly has any health remaining and I missed the last salvo <laughs> so close and also another important point you saw that D is being capped well but that gives away the Fubuki's position and this is a really important part about managing the game that you play is to understand what is seen and what is not based off of the caps and the information those caps tell you. So the Baltimore here that I missed the torps on was south of sea. Uh, we ended up taking out the Otago, thankfully. I didn't have to get in, into another fight with him. Um, but this guy is clearly distracted and uh, he had a few thousand HP remaining. Um, plenty enough in this situation to be able to go toe to toe with him and try to get this kill but his front turrets are turning around and I'm so close to getting him and I'm afraid of any shots coming in. Look at this. Bounce. <laughs> or actually probably damage absorbed by a module but it didn't do anything so yay. Um, so we're capping A which I didn't even realize up until now we had a ship on the south of the map anyways that managed to end up over at A so that was really crazy. Uh, we end up capping C as well and now it's a matter of finding where the hell that Fubuki is because we are down 80 points and time is running out. We have two and a half minutes and I purposely fire there 
to extend my concealment range and to find out whether or not he's close to me or not. So sure enough, there he is. And check this out. <laughs> Dude has no health. I mean, this was perfect. Boom. That put us right back in the lead. Amazing. And then we jump on D and seal the victory. So that was easily my best match in this ship. Um, just the situations I was in, uh, just... It was nuts. So 3,400 base XP, 143,000 damage. Um, you know, we had some really good play by a few players on that team. And uh, yeah, uh, that that definitely had my pulse running for quite a while afterwards. So as far as my conclusion about this, uh, main detriments that stand out are one, the Torps. You go down to two racks, certainly a downgrade. Um, you know, they do hit harder, but they're just... Yeah, they're just slow as shit. So uh, that's that's to me, of course, that's going to be a problem. Um, I would like to use them more frequently. The long reload is a huge hindrance. Uh, all of that pretty much gets taken care of with the Fletcher, but we'll get to that later. Uh, the other part is the matchmaker. You're going to be going up against Shimikazes, and they have nasty guns. If you haven't played one uh, against one, they're dangerous. Uh, Kaparovs, Gearings, Fletchers, Udaloys. Uh, Kageros even are, uh, they can be pretty damn dangerous with their guns too. It's going to be harder for you than with the Mayhan on an average. It's going to be harder for you than with the Farragate on an average. Bear that in mind and try, like I said, to keep the odds stacked in your favor. Have a cruiser with you, have them with radar, make sure that you've got backup uh, if you're going to go destroyer hunting because, man... <laughs> There's some dangerous stuff out there, but I'll say that this has got to be one of the top ships in the game overall. This is a fantastic ship to play, and uh, the concealment, the the guns, oh my god, the guns, uh, the the handling and the the traverse. I mean, just overall, it's it's a joy to play. So, got to be one of my favorite ships in the game, hands down. But uh, let me know if uh, your experiences, you know, are similar to mine or if they're different. But Feel free to mention that in the comments below, and I will be streaming today at 2.30 p.m. Eastern for a few hours, but hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you back here next time. Take care.